By this time, a lot of men and women of questionable reputations were hanging around Jesus, listening intently. The Pharisees and religion scholars were not pleased, not at all pleased. They growled. He takes in sinners and eats meals with them, treating them like old friends. Their grumbling triggered this story. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and lost one. Wouldn't you leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one until you found it? When found, you can be sure you would put it across your shoulders, rejoicing. And when you got home, call in your friends and neighbors and saying, celebrate with me, I've found my lost sheep. Count on it. There's more joy in heaven over one sinner's rescued life than over 99 good people in no need of rescue. Or imagine a woman who has 10 coins and loses one. Wouldn't she light a lamp and scour the house, looking in every nick and cranny until she finds it? And when she finds it, you can be sure she'll call in her friends and neighbors, celebrate with me, I found my lost coin. Count on it. That's the kind of party God's angels throw every time one lost soul turns to God. Then he said, there was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he'd gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all through that country, and he began to feel it. He signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, All those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounding, he ran out, embraced him and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a prize-winning heifer and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead, and now alive, given up for lost and now found. And they began to have a wonderful time. All this time his older brother was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the bus boys, he asked, What's going on? He told him, Your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast, barbecued beef, because he has come home safe and sound. The older brother stomped off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him. But he wouldn't listen. The son said, Look, how many years have I stayed here serving you and never gave you one moment of grief? But you've never thrown a party for me and my friends. Then when this son of yours has thrown away your money on all kinds of stuff shows up and you go all out with a feast. His father said, Son, you, you don't understand. You're with me all the time. 
and everything that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time, and we had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead, and he's alive. He was lost, and he's found.'"